All right. Hey, I've got my coffee too. Oh, nice. Cheers. Cheers. Happy whatever day it is today. Yeah, I know. It's all blending together at this point. It's like I can only be on my laptop or phone for so long trying to figure out what to do. And I don't know. I'm at least getting into yoga now is a nice little, uh, I don't know, uh, breath of fresh air, for lack of a better phrase, uh, from all of this constant day to day. You know, should I be doing things that are going to potentially help save my business? Should I be doing things that are just going to like enrich my life? Or should I just sleep in every day and wait this thing out? I don't know. Aaron, you're not the sleep in kind of guy. No. You're, you're out there always trying to figure out what the next thing is. So last week you announced that you've kind of just put Sorel on hold because you don't want to endanger the lives of your customer base. So yeah. what's happening now? How do you feel about that? I don't know. I mean, it's still weird. You know, uh, my wife put it really well the other day when we were kind of talking about things and she could see how like, torn I was over everything that, you know, as, as chefs were built to, to work, like that's what we do. And, and the one thing, and, and she started talking about this and then it really hit me was that, you know, one thing we've always been able to do is outwork people. Like those of us who've had like success, the way we've been able to define ourselves is by hard work and not giving up and constantly doing it. The problem with this situation is that that's not going to really matter. I mean, like I started doing all the numbers on like what we would make for, um, selling meals to go and it doesn't really shake out very well. I mean, yes, I can keep people employed. And for some reason, like somebody wasn't able to get their unemployment, um, then I would look at it as being more necessary, but my team's covered right now with benefits. So it's kind of a, I mean, it's a lot of work for really not much profit because you have to do such large numbers to make that work. Um, you know, you make, you do make a little money, but it's a lot of work to do that. And so like, what's a better use of time? I don't, I don't know right now. I'm very torn on what to do because just sitting at home um, drives me nuts. Okay. Well, today we are talking to two people who are in the same boat as you are. <laughs> we are talking to Jill Kinney and Sean McCrane who own Copine. Um, and Aaron, you actually know these two guys pretty well. Yeah. Yeah. So they're joining us just to sort of check in with them and see what they're doing. Hi, you guys. Can you hear us okay? Yes. Hi. Hi. Uh, you're at home. <laughs> Home. Only home and work. That's it. Back and forth. <laughs> so, I know that this has to be a struggle for you too. What exactly is it that you're doing right now to one, keep busy and two, to just sort of figure out when this is all over, what is coping going to look like? Are you going to be operating any differently? Um, good question. Uh, so right now we're doing the takeout, which people that can do that are still doing that. Um, hasn't been uh, that hard for us um, other than just sort of switching gears and uh, yeah, the switching gear sounds like the hardest part because you're not a takeout restaurant no but we do have a, a takeout element that we already had in place for our Sunday suppers oh, that's right so we just have expanded on that and we're doing that four days a week okay uh, as you know safe as possible so like everybody else, we had to uh, temporarily lay off our employees, but we have two cooks who come not via mass transit. They drive themselves, and it's just the three of them in the kitchen and me out front. And we're doing Thursday through Sundays with a two-day pre-order in advance so that we're only purchasing the product that we need to serve. Okay. And how is your... A day, so, um, what was that? We're capping it at 30 meals a day. Mm. Okay. Um, which feeds 60, well, it's a it's meal, for, meal two. for two. Um, we just don't want to, we're not trying to really make money necessarily as much as just keep our head a little bit above water and help feed people in the neighborhood. How has your staff's morale been during all of this? Pretty good. Um, I have, uh, in the kitchen, it's just a small crew. So, um, you know, three of them, uh, have applied for unemployment, um, and then two of them are with me um, to execute uh, these these meals. So, uh, front of the house has been great. They've been stopping in um, almost every day of the week. Someone else will stop in just to kind of say hi. A lot of them live in the neighborhood. Um, they kind of just want to get out of their house for a minute. So. Yeah, we're trying to keep our family connected. So I send them an email every Sunday. 
any news updates, any guests who have asked about them and how they're doing. And, you know, I say, if you're healthy and you're able to get here safely, you're welcome to stop by and keep your distance and we can chat and, you know, kind of keep everybody connected. They're just wanting to come back to work eventually, you know. Yeah. So. Um, do you find that most of your um, clientele, your regular customers, are they still supporting you during this time? Very much. Yeah. yeah. Very much. We, it was, I don't want to say interesting because the whole thing is so surreal, <laughs> but as, as we approached the shutdown, I just noticed more and more of the guests really wanting us to survive this. So as our cover counts would drop, we had more room to place people at safer distances for that last week of service. And I had a lot of people ask, are you guys going to shift to takeout? And this Sunday that we, everybody had to, we found out we all had to close that, that Sunday supper, which we had already, you know, been ready for, we, we sold like almost 30, which we've never saw that many. We sell maybe seven, maybe five, you know, it's not a huge thing that we do. And I said to Sean, this is definitely what's going to happen. Like everyone wants to, they, they get tired of their own cooking eventually and they want something else, you know, so. Yeah, or the store runs out of the food that they're used to buying. So what is the best way that people can support you two right now? Uh, just, Good. You, yeah, just purchasing these, uh, these dinners, um, you know, the whole gift certificate thing helps. Um, we've had a lot of, uh, a lot of gift certificate sales, which helps. Um, that's, you know, that's about it. Just, uh, I think the biggest thing is just everyone pulling for each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would agree with that a lot. I was going to ask, you know, I always appreciated you guys, um, with the, the Sunday supper, um, meal to go thought that you've had since the beginning, I always thought was a really fantastic idea and something that I think a lot of restaurants um, have missed the opportunity just to add that in. Uh, mm. You know, as far as this goes, is this going to put any influence into offering other options or retail options in that way once eventually the smoke on this clears and we kind of move into whatever the brave new world might be after this? Um, well, we, we normally have retail items for sale in the case already. Um, it was sort of an organic way of uh, utilizing trim in the restaurant mm -hmm. that we can make soups with or little potted foie gras or cookies or whatnot, um, which that has taken a huge increase in sales also because we're able to keep that case stocked. So when people pick up their dinners, they've been buying um, other items. Um, a lot of foie gras sales, which yeah. is weird. People are, <laughs> I guess they can't get that. Can't anywhere. make that at home, I guess. <laughs> um, but, you know, when all this clears over, you know, my focus will still be, um, my main focus will be the dining room. Um, hopefully, uh, we'll have an uptick in our Sunday supper sales. So that is a, it's a good revenue stream. Um, but, you know, it's hard to, it's hard to tell. If people yeah. are going to be scared to go out to restaurants when we're able to open or, you know, they want to stick to the, the takeaway for now. I don't know. We'll have to just see what happens. But I think as far as support goes, we definitely need people to continue to reach out to legislators because, you know, now we're having a situation where we're dealing with our landlord. And, you know, I understand that they're in a really difficult position. They have a lot of properties and they need their revenue stream as well. But the government needs to help landlords, which needs to help their tenants. You know, it's like a trickle down for everybody. And it's going to be a problem. I just, you know, unless people are really reaching out to their local council. Yeah. And that's, that's a huge concern that I have because one of my largest concerns is that out of uh, just sheer fear of failure, you're going to have a lot of small business operators from, you know, all different business types, but definitely restaurants take some of these small business loans with this word like debt forgiveness kind of buried in there. Um, and there's a lot of small type to that, you know, that, that people need to be aware of. And I'm very concerned that they're going to try to subsidize the fix or whatever for this on small business loans to, a, you know, a business that traditionally has such thin margins anyways that, you know, any debt uh, can be uh, in the form of at least a loan can be very hard on them. So it's, it's a really strange time. I'm not sure uh, what kind of real help we're going to end up getting that'll make a, you know, a substantial difference. Um, so that's like this fear of closures becomes a, a, a real conversation. Yeah. And, and yeah, 
you know, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. I mean, I don't think that people are, I'm hoping that there aren't people out there that are, that are just being opportunistic about any of it, whether it means selling food that they, you know, like trying to sell more than they really should be doing, um, or people trying to get you in some sort of loan thing. I mean, I definitely would suggest a lawyer. That's what we're using. We have lawyer friends, lawyer contacts, uh, people that are willing to work pro bono to make sure that anything we do um, sign up for is something that we understand every single level of it. So, What are you guys doing just to keep your mental health in check? <laughs> what, any <laughs> silver lining here with this, you know, time off? How are you not going crazy? Uh, you know, we spend so much time working all the time that actually having a day off to sleep is kind of nice. Um, uh, I don't know. I've been hanging out in the backyard, hanging out with the dogs, building fires, playing barbecuing, Candy Crush, playing no, Candy Crush on my candy phone. Crush. <laughs> how, are, how are your dogs not driving you crazy? Well, they're, crazy. they're so sweet. They're, they've been really. They're happy that we're home. You know. Wait, I just wanna. I wanna <laughs> share this little thing. Where is it? There you go. <laughs> that I saw and I'm just like how are they staying sane with like two small children running around <laughs> <laughs> oh that's funny that's uh, them yeah that's them <laughs> your dogs are like toddlers yeah they are <laughs> they sleep a lot though this was a moment of a burst of energy for them yeah I don't know it, it, it's a it's it's kind of nice to have an extra day or something, but it's definitely um, a heightened sense of everything we do every day, meaning we go in Wednesday. It's like a re-sanitize of everything. These guys prep for the meals on Thursday. I start sending out all the emails for the pickups and whatnot. We've developed just a whole new routine of the way we're doing things. So by Sunday, honestly, when that last dinner is picked up, and then we re-sanitize everything. You know, it's like this exhaustive process, which everybody is going through in their own lives, but we're doing it at home. And then we're doing it at work too. So I think the four days a week is fine. And, and then we just kind of rest a little bit and then we can. <laughs> uh, all right. We'll have a good day, you guys. Talk right, to you yeah, soon. Thank you guys. Take care. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye. I think staying in the moment is the best way to go. And then just kind of, um, you know, traversing whatever the future is going to be in the best way possible. Right. And to your point, you know, the, the, the ripple effect that this is creating, even if you were to open your restaurant three weeks from now, who's available to help you do that? Who are your purveyors going to be? Like, yeah. which wineries are going to be struggling? Like, I don't think anyone's going to really know until that day comes and you're ready to open. And I really hope you have enough notice. Oh, I mean, honestly, God. I mean, I feel like there's not going to be a lot of notice for restaurants when the quarantine is over. And then, you know, you need time to plan and reopen a whole new restaurant for yeah. a lot of people. That's going to be such an interesting day when that does happen because, you know, is it a flood of diners who are like, Oh my God, I get to go outside now. I'm, I've been in jail for so long. Or is it what I think will be the case, which is we're all still really freaked out. We just had to spend two months at home. Do we even go outside? And so I think you're going to see a mixture. Like I'm worried about some people I know and you know, um, their mental well being and their health and, you know, hopefully nothing terrible will happen with anybody feeling too much stress from this, but it's a realistic concern that suicide is something that happens during times like this. I hope that everyone has good support because uh, no one did anything wrong. And that's the thing that I think everybody has to cling to. No one could have seen this happening. No one, you know, in our industry could have prevented this. This is a failure of um, governments um, and we have to just do our best to, you know, weather this storm however we can. Uh, speaking of mental health, I think I'm going to go outside before it decides to rain again and come back and do this all over again, Groundhog Perfect. Day style. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. All right. I'll talk to you soon, my friend. Okay. Take care, Julian. Bye. Bye.